Hello again. It's another video on our substation, one of the two substations on our miniature power grid system in the lab for instrumentation of BTC. We currently have an unusual system or an unusual configuration set up right now with our system. We have both of our substations online and we have two generating stations running. On one end we have Diablo Miner, that generating station is running. On the other end we have the Bellingdale Valley generating station running. On the Stevens substation, we have breakers four and one closed, so Diablo Miner is able to put its power onto that bus and that transmission line. On the Nooksack end here, we have breakers one and five closed, so we're able to take that power and shuttle out through to the breaker five to that generating station. Normally, we'd do something like this simply to synchronize those two generators together. What we've done on purpose is we've synchronized them together and then purposely tried to decrease the speed on one of them. When I say try to decrease the speed, what I mean is when the breakers are closed on both ends, we have a continuous path all the way through, those two generators are locked together. So when we slow down or to cut the power on the prime mover of that generator, the motor that spins that generator there, it tries to slow down, but it can't because we're electrically locked with the other station. What happens is it's almost as though they're mechanically coupled together, but they're coupled through the power system. What that means is the one that's spinning slower begins to act as a load on the system, drawing power the way a motor would. The one that's trying to spin faster is acting as a generator. They're both actually going the same speed since they're locked together electrically, but the power flow, the power imbalance is there, so that one is acting as a true generator and the other one is acting as a motor. You generally don't want this sort of situation on a power grid. You want your generators to actually be generators. But we're doing this because right now, it's an easy way for me to put an adjustable load on my system. I can shift the flow of power back and forth just by changing the prime mover speed of my generator, making the generator try to push or pull the system as much as it can. So what I've done is I've adjusted so we've got a load of about a half an amp of current per phase through the system. And so far everything's running that way, everything's happy. We are below the pickup values for the overcurrent relays on each generator. And since this is a current going through, current in equals current out in both substations, neither one of my substations is showing a differential problem. It's happy. In fact, if we go over to our bus differential relay and we monitor the current there, we can see currents on A, B, and C phase are looking pretty good. Uh, basically show the, the small values b bouncing back and forth, which is noise. We have the ratios of our CTs set up so that these numbers are actually milliamps AC. So we're in a, essentially a balanced condition. Current in equals current out. So with that in mind, you may be wondering, okay, what am I shooting this video for? We don't really have a fault. We just have a load in the system and everything seems to be okay. I want to show another way to demonstrate or to simulate a fault to the 87 bus differential without actually putting a fault in the system. Each of the circuit breakers in the substation has its own CT test switch array. Each circuit breaker has six CTs inside of it, three on the line and three on the load, and those come over to a bank of test switches, which we can use to measure the current, inject currents for tests or, or whatnot. What I'm going to do is access the test switch bank for circuit breaker number five, and I'm going to purposely open one of these switches. Now this is a shorting switch, which you need to have in a CT circuit for safety reasons. So when I open that knife switch, it will place a short circuit on the CT side so the CT itself never becomes open circuited, but it will break or disconnect that CT from our differential relay. So what's going to happen is our differential relay is going to think it sees a difference of current on A phase. It will see the current entering the bus through circuit breaker number one A phase, but it will not see the current exiting the bus through circuit breaker number five A phase. So I'll get a trip event, an 87 differential, as soon as I open this. And there we go. So we come over here, and sure enough, I have an instantaneous trip on A phase. Again, the instantaneous part uh, makes more sense when you realize this is a 551 relay. It's really an overcurrent relay that we have adapted to be an 87 differential. So we're, we've adapted it to work as an instantaneous current trip, and it saw the difference on A phase and said, okay, we've got ourselves a current difference problem. And so it tripped the 87 lockout relay, and the bank of switches on the 87 lockout tripped all five breakers on the bus, and that isolated the bus from what it thought was a fault. Again, there's no actual fault on the bus, but we simulated one just by fooling the relay.
by opening up one of the test switches in the CT circuit. As a demonstration, again, of how an 87 bus differential protection works, but also as a cautionary illustration for anyone working on systems like this, you had better understand what you were doing when you play around with CT test switches. Although there was no, nothing unsafe about doing this, in terms of our personal safety working with the switch, we weren't in any danger because this is a self-shorting switch, a make-before-break switch, that would keep the CT shorted as we op opened up the rest of the circuit. Still, this caused the substation to trip offline because in that moment, it did not see an equality between current in and current out on A phase, and it thought we had a bus problem. So it's an illustration of how the 87 bus differential protection works, and also, like I said, a cautionary illustration of what not to do on a system unless you know exactly what you are doing.